This podcast has been brought to you by our Patreon account. After almost four years of producing free content in one way or another, we're finally opening up the doors for people to uh, financially support us. For anyone out there that supports what we're doing, believes in us, believes in what we're trying to achieve, uh, feel free to head over to patreon.com forward slash XY advisor. And second of all, we've uh, finally converted our mainly dormant website into a membership site now. It is focused on training. You pay $49 a month, you get one credit to spend uh, on the library of different training courses and those training courses are constantly getting upgraded and constantly getting added to. Uh, We actually give half the money to the course providers because we value what they do. Uh, It's just a really good way for us to to improve upon the financial advice community. So that's everything. Enjoy the podcast. This session is also brought to you by Sun Super. They're one of the fastest growing profit for members or industry funds in Australia. They were the very first of these funds to partner with advisors and they've got functionality where you can actually link to your client's Sun Super accounts and charge advice fees through the fund as well as a number of uh, tech innovations to make it easier for you to work with your clients. They've got great investments, they're really, really cheap and their team are just generally legends. So if you haven't already connected with Sun Super, give them a shout because they're doing some really cool stuff. Paul, what's happening, my man? Clay, so I'm back. back. I'm back. You're what back. happened there? <laughs> Who Am I back in? Oh, I don't. Not you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Thanks for inviting me back, guys. I feel uh, very loved, very appreciated. I've had a lot of calls since the last time. <laughs> Better be worth it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, and and you know, I'm sure these clients won't um, won't uh, worry me saying that, but I, I've actually got a few clients from uh, from awesome. the last time. Awesome. Really cool. People uh, looking me up and, and finding the podcast and listening to the whole thing. Yeah. Going, I thought that's an endorsement. And, and, and going, I didn't know you knew all that. I need you to sort me out. We do a great job of making people look good on this podcast. No. <laughs> I thought it was the other way around. Yeah, anyway. that's what I was thinking as well. <laughs> Mate, wait, hey, so since, since, since we last caught up, you, you, you've been married. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How yes. cool is that? Very cool. Very cool. Nice. Um, yeah, my life's uh, changed a lot in the last uh, couple of years. So mm, very well, happy man. Thank you, thank you. And went on an amazing honeymoon through Europe and saw oh, beautiful uh, Paris and London and, and Florence and uh, yeah. And I love the th- that lifestyle. You know, Australia is we're such a nanny state, aren't we? You can't do anything here, right? Yeah, you can't yeah, do yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. especially in Sydney, like lockout laws and that. Oh, it's... over there. Don't get me started. You buy a beer anywhere. Oh, you know, it's great. There's Walk people the smoking street. in the restaurants. Yeah. Not that I, I'm not a, not a fan <laughs> of that, but you know what? They chill out a bit. Love I remember being in it. Vegas and uh, <laughs> and, you? And, and, <laughs> and someone smoking in a in a casino, and I, I I said I don't even smoke, but can I have a cigarette mm-hmm. just so smoke. I can smoke <laughs> indoors? Because I'd never done it. You feel like that when you're over there yeah. and smoking. Yeah. You're like. I might go and buy a pack or something, or <laughs> yeah. just a cigar or something. Not that I did, but you, you sort of feel like. Well, the flip you have side, to. yeah, the flip side of being so nanny state every year is when you do go overseas, it's so exciting because you're like, exactly. oh my god, I get to do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what South America is like. Oh, you know, well, you, that's that's, that's yeah, another that's, level. That's, yeah, you turn up and you're like, you're off a leash for the first time yeah. in your life. Yeah, you got to have some rules. Yeah, you know, yeah some yeah. rules are good yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not too many, and you know, and I suppose that leads into. What rules are we going to have in our XY industry, advisor guys? advisor group letter to um, mm. who's the current um, prime minister? Oh, sorry, um, uh, prime minister. <laughs> that'd be Mal, big Mal. <laughs> no, the state um, state premier. But uh, you, but you, mate, I got no idea. Gladys. Yeah, open letter from XY advisor. Remember uh, yeah. Lords? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Look, it's not so much that. It's just um, people uh, should be allowed to police themselves to an extent, and you know. Well, Once you're yeah. over eighteen, are you an adult or not? You Correct. Know? And to to your question that you just posed is what what uh what rules are we going to accept and take on in our industry? It's a very good question. We're, we've been bombarded with Phasia, with the Royal Commission, with the Productivity Commission, yeah, the Superannuation Report that came out. Super report. Oh my God, that's a headache and a half. Five hundred and twelve pages of scintillating reading. I know. You're the only person that I know has even opened it up. I assume. You didn't read all 512. No, there's an abridged 82 page version. Oh, thank God. At. But um, yeah, look, oh, where do I start? I don't know. Um, Is it? <laughs> oh, you have it, yeah. I'm have presuming there's a whole lot of stuff that's not really that like much to write home about. And then. Look, the amount of change in this industry right now, I've never seen it. And I've been, you know, 
listened to the last one. I've been around and I've seen a fair bit and I've been through a lot of change. Mm. But the amount of change in this industry right now is what phenomenal. What do you think? Phenomenal. What, okay, so it has to be coming from someone. What do you think is the, if you were to sum it up in one goal from somewhere, who, who who's trying to do what? Everyone's trying to do everything. <laughs> that's the problem. Right. And I think that's the problem. The industry doesn't work well together. Right. We don't. We don't play nice together. Right. Everyone's got an agenda. Everyone's yeah, yeah, trying yeah, yeah. to push their own agenda. And we're not actually thinking about the one thing that actually counts, which is you know fixing Australians' financial freedom, fixing their life, fixing up their lifestyles, yeah. making them more financially secure, taking financial stress out of the world. That's what we should all be trying to work on. Yeah. Just because you've got a product or what, like, please spare well, me. It, it's I'd argue it's shareholders' faults, um, short term. Uh, int- um, like requirements from uh, CEOs to keep yeah, on chasing, well, that's, that's the, chasing the carrot sort of thing. So, so how, do you, how do you argue that the um, industry super um, network are non-for-profit, but they're up to their necks in this as well? True. Which is not shareholders. And we're still to Stakeholders. see that. That'll be... Yeah, that's well, a very uh, good point. David Whiteley's put out a, a, a message recently. He, he was the ex-CEO. Um, ex- He's moved on somewhere else. But um, they're very anti the um, the measures that the Productivity Commission put forward, mm. um, which was a very interesting Which take. is the top 10, well, it's just blah, 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 blah. Well, well the jobs because, have to go. Well, that's because it takes away their current mandate um, uh, for default super. You're right. Um, and look, the argument is that they've done a great job with default super and their, you know, their uh, my super or their, their default returns are better, um, less fees, which is right. But the other side is, as we all know, and even... They admit good advice produces an even better out- outcome. Yeah, I think the simple arguments that have been used on both all sides um, over the last 10, 15 years, certain marketing campaigns, um, all that stuff is about to just be blown out of the water because there's a look through going on that's going, what's happening after that? Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. Mate, massively. And, and you overlay that with, you know, what, in two weeks' time, uh, super's on the docket um, the pro- well, at, at, the, at, the, at the Royal Commission. You fold these things in and political pressures and it, who knows what's going to happen. Mm. The, it, it's an inflection point in this industry that we will look back on, I think, in 10 years' time and go, that's, that's when it all changed. Mm. I have no idea what the landscape will be. Yeah. Clayton keeps on asking me this. Um, <laughs> no, I want an answer. I, I just want an answer. And <laughs> the bloody thing's not working. Um, it's cloudy. I'm going, I don't know, mate. Okay, um, well, okay, so we don't know what's going to happen, but what would you say um, to advisors out there in terms of preparing for the change that may come off the back? Well, it depends of on what your industry, what, what part of the, the your advice uh, model is. Um, some people won't be affected at all. Mm. Um, Look, at the end of the day, you pro- provide value at a fair price. You're going to have clients, repeat clients, turn up and look to you and refer people to you. It, that's a very simple model and it's a very simplistic model. If you try and take things a bit further, corporate super, those sorts of areas, that whole area, corporate super and advisors in that, that's been dying for a while, but there's some really hardcore, great advisors in that space mm. who do fantastic jobs for the employees and the employers and add value the super funds and everywhere, that's under threat as well at the moment. Yeah, okay. And that's that cross, like just that top 10 sort of concept. Well, and I, I just feel it's a race to the bottom. It's a race to default. Like when, since when is default great for people? Like a default situation. Yeah. They're spending all this money on all these, you know, educational things. And well, it's actually beyond that. Like you think about the governments and, and ASIC and APRA and all these bodies, the, the amount of investigations that are going on and, and they're trying to legislate us out of a situation where people are apathetic about their money mm. instead of actually working a way to inspire people yeah, to be non-apathetic about their money, to get them involved. How do you engage people? I mean, engagement's a, a favourite topic to of extent. ours. How do yeah. you actually get people to understand that superannuation isn't this big, you know, and even the name is terrible, superannuation. Oh, like, my God. I've got it? a major gripe with that. Right. But it's actually just delayed wages. Mm. It's a delayed salary. You, you're not getting paid. You know, you're getting paid this much, 10% of it's going off there, and you're going to get that later. So look after it. If that was in your own bank account, would you just leave it there and go, hey, 
I don't know about that. I don't want to know about that. Let someone else deal with that. If that was your, you know, if, if that had Paul Mann bank account, use it later, okay. Oh, yeah. It's a bit of delayed gratification, but no one's into that these days. <laughs> well, sometimes we've got no choice, do we? <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> I know what you mean. Like, everyone's right now, but I'm sure there's smart people building great superannuation funds right now that have those sorts of features. Oh, I, I um, haven't come across any, but yeah, let me know. I heard about one recently, but let's not go there just yet. <laughs> so, um, so Dover, what's your opinion? What's what, what's going on here? Um, oh, look, we... we we don't know that story yet fully. Taylor. You know, um, my my concern is for, for the how many clients, 40,000 40, clients is the number being thrown around that have all of a sudden haven't got financial advice and maybe have had uh, financial advice taken away from or, or the, the thought that financial advice is good, you know, mm. the integrity of financial mm. advice chipped down a bit. Yeah, That worries me. Mm. It's not a good look for the industry. There's some great advisors in Dover and I know mm. that. Um, and f- to have that rug pulled away from you must be horrendous. Absolutely. Um, and, and I really feel for them, and, you know, I've seen all the stuff that XY are doing for them, and I congratulate you guys. I tried to call Clayton on a Saturday morning um, to say, yeah, if you need me, mate, just let me know. Because, mm. um, you know, that's the one great thing about advisors. We do rally around each other. Oh, when, there's been some great to. support. Absolutely, and that's what we should be, you know. The yeah. issue is, but so I don't think there's a lack of support for these guys in terms of opportunities. The problem's going to be is the nanny state that they have to navigate to make a chance. Even if you actually find someone that would love to have you... <laughs> Well, think about it. It's, it's, yep. we, like you got the shit that has to go on. 30 like, days, so right? 30 days, Absolutely. I think, from go to woe. And just getting a police check... Right, which which turns up in the mail, hmm. takes two weeks to get. So and that's probably the easiest thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and this and this is probably the trying, trying to work out where, where your education standings are right oh, now. I mean, try man. and do that. Try, so, try and see. <laughs> like that's everyone's why this got is an opinion on the that. The only reason why one of the major things, obviously, there's like the brand damage and like the personal like perception damage for all these advisors and the clients that they're dealing with out there, but. The reason why this is such a big thing is because everyone knows how messed up this process is that goes on. Like, if there was no issues and it was very efficient to actually transfer to another license, yeah. the whole process, like tech was used around it, then this wouldn't be such a big thing. It's totally. like, okay, electronic communication to the client, whatever it is, like, it would just so, be... So why is this industry like this? You know, what, why, like, and I'm going to, you know, look, you guys talk to more people... In this space than anyone, you look at the list list of podcasts you, you guys have done, which is phenomenal. It's great work. You're talking to everyone, right? Yeah. So how how have we got ourselves into this mess? Is my question. I think and, it's and I think it's commissions. I actually think I think we started with one page financial advice, and then on that page of financial advice, it said put your put your you know your money with this product. It's going to pay me this commission. Then everyone came along and said, well. We're going to stop that from happening. So you got to jump through all of these hoops, and which, uh, which you know, people say it's only a strategy to get the same result anyway. Then we've re- then we've taken um, commissions out of investment products now, and so I'm like, well, why do we still need this massively convoluted SOA? Whereas there's no more commissions, especially in investment or superannuation products. Well, I, I, so it's a little bit Buffett esque, that isn't it? Saying. Show, show me, show me the incentive, and I'll show you the outcome. That's one of his favourites. Yes. Right? So, well, I think that's, that's it's all that's about incentives. But well, that's definitely one part of it. That's an element. But I think it's got to do with um, even when we we're talking to Vince before, like the ease of. So you think about the apathetic population. You go, okay, someone sort of they'll talk to you, like they'll engage with you, they'll engage you because they actually engage with you. Mm. It may not be about what you're actually going to do with them or whatever. They may just like you. They know they should be talking to someone. What's, to what are simple you. value propositions to deal with people? Like the hardest stuff in advice is working through the behavioural, all that sort of stuff and I've, managing. Most of the time spent on doing – the hardest thing is getting people through underwriting on insurance – but the biggest thing for the client is actually sitting there doing their cash flow and working yeah, through that. Yeah, all that and sort of stuff. That's what they want to know. But the simple conversation. So I know what you're saying. Well, it's, it's the investment. When I first started, the investment conversation was one of the, you, you just tap into greed and you get a client. That's it. And that's <laughs> you want more what, money? Here we go. That's exactly. And that's the easiest way. That's the simplest value proposition and it's been used for a long time. Mm-hmm. And when you have that, that's, in, that's directly linked what you're delivering there is a product essentially because it's in, like obviously there's the investment management, but it's so close to the product that because of that tight relationship, 
it's it's not the advice and like you can go into the whole aligned aspect but on the ground when you're talking about why it's continued is because it is an easy value proposition mm. and an apathetic population who likes the idea who greed is a quite a trigger for people to well, engage it's a basic it's a basic, it's a basic and human that's what you get so like greed and that's fear. the challenge because it's not the there wasn't enough friction so that was the easiest path the path of least resistance for a lot of advisors and it still is one of the like and that's do you think we haven't defined what we do well enough I think it's too broad, maybe. People maybe, maybe I, I think it's because it's so an hard to define. Like, well, well, is it? Because it's the intangibles Are piece. we trying to do too much? Are we trying to be everything to everyone and be that Who else person? is going to do it for well, them? Uh, their accountant. No. Um, <laughs> that's beyond, like, are we trying to be too much? Are we trying to be the glue yeah, in, you, every, you, in every sandwich? Oh, and I'm not, I don't know. Mm. I'm just you, you put forward a good point because saying, we're, I, you know? I, I think accountants and advisors go, well, have well, been on that journey do? for a little while now to be that one throat to choke, so to speak, to, to be that center, the, the quarterback to someone's mm. life. I think, yeah, I think that's kind of where we well, went. The accounting industry didn't really take on what we do. That you think back naturally, they they should have do, been absolutely doing absolutely they doing. should have. Well, the majority they, of them they, don't they, they actually. Never to. The more, like I was saying, we were just talking before. I don't, majority don't understand what financial planning is. No, not unless. So if you go financial advice, they're going. That's what I do. I advise businesses around their finances, and then you you drop in wealth. Oh yeah, so you manage their investments, and that that's like a big proportion. Absolutely, and it's really hard. Like that's an insurance you think of, piece. Well, yeah, and the insurance. But it's because, like, they're an industry built on tangible benefit. And we're, part of our industry is built on tangible benefit. And part of it's intangible. And part mm. of it's intangible. And the biggest benefit sits with the intangible. And by nature oh, of the description absolutely. there, it's a hard for a lot of people to grasp that sometimes. Is. That is. You know, it's not as simple as super insurances and investments, like, you know, which everyone says. It's not that easy. Yeah. And that's, that's an issue when it comes to licensing, you know, because... How do you license? Because you know, I've thought about this. I've got a lot of mates who are tradies and those sorts of things. And I was kept on thinking how, how simple it is for them to, to, to structure their businesses. You know, they do three or four years of tech while they're an apprentice. They work under someone for a while. Then they have some super, you know, supervision periods. And they can go out by themselves and they can get a gold license or whatever it is. But there's this absolute transition mm to getting to that stage of being a master. So you're all for the professional year then? Um, look, I've had uh, 20 professional years, I reckon. <laughs> um, and experience, there's nothing beats experience and there's nothing better than working under someone who knows a whole lot more than you. Mm. So whether you structure it as a professional year, I would actually say you, you probably need more. Financial planning apprenticeship, three-year apprenticeship. You probably need more. Like you come through and you... you Let's be honest, you, you, you can go and do your degree, advanced, whatever it is, you, you know, do all those things. But, and I've seen it so many times, you plonk a really brilliant person in front of someone and mm. they freeze up. They can't talk mm. to them. They can't actually get that other side, that soft skills that used to be trained as sales skills, but that's mm. a bad word now. And those sorts of things. So how do you get someone to be able to um, use their knowledge to actually... Help someone. Well, the, the, the traditional way of uh, people coming advisors or the sort of that sort of from the ground up journey, there's a huge issue with that because what are advisors looking for when they're looking for support? They're looking for someone to complement the mm. stuff that a really good advisor probably usually isn't as good Absolutely. at doing, which is a lot like someone that's great at engaging with people, great with um, sort of navigating um, sort of the emotional landscape with people. They're not always going to be that great with the detail stuff that comes on the back end that's all required to be done. So if you go, okay, the journey's going to come from, oh, someone does power planning for a bit. Once When they become a really good power planner, then they'll become an advisor. You've got a huge yeah, disconnect. it's almost like we've got the, a wrong graduation process. It, it needs, like, and, and I know everyone's trying to solve it, and I don't know what the answer is, but like I said, I look at the, the trades area and they've got it nailed. Mm. You know, and the other, and there is no... You know, um, worry. If you don't like the tradies, don't bring him back, right? If he does a bad job, he's got um, you know, insurance and things like that, and you go and use another one. They fee for service, and it's an hourly rate or whatever it is, plus costs, and it's pretty clear. Um, and they don't have to say, look, why? You know, 
Imagine if an electrician came around and had to explain which wire they were using, why they were using, why they chose that wire, oh, all the man. options that they thought instead. The wires they didn't choose. Right. I've got this light switch. Now, there's 45 different types of these. I've selected five of them. I've chosen this one because of these features. I did consider all these different ones. It's a, imagine, it's a real imagine depressing that. analogy. And they had to that. give you, just to rewrite, they had to give you a, a 70 page document to say that. What if you went to a doctor, same sort of thing, and, you know, he, he gives you a prescription for the... Do you ever question why he gave you the prescription for that I specifically the asked them not to tell me. Because I, 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 I'm getting surgery on Monday, right, for hernia, and the anaesthetist gives me a call up and he goes, mm. do this, <laughs> do that, blah, 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 and he goes, do you want to know of all the things that could go wrong. I said, no, specifically don't tell me what could go wrong. I don't want to know. So, and, we, and we go in with that trust. Yeah. And they do not have to produce a document. They do not have to. You know, mm. Because we've got trust in that in that industry and the structure, the, into, into, the integrity of the structure of that mm. industry, that we go, well, they've done this much training. They've had supervision. They've, you know, if they're there, we trust that they've had the right training. Now, just like financial advisors, there's been rogue doctors who shouldn't be there and shouldn't are doing the wrong thing, but they get weeded out eventually. Hopefully, there's not too much damage. Arguably, uh, the damage is not as reversible as financial planning damage. Uh, 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 potentially, you know, it's pretty yeah. scary to think about that. Mm. Same with an electrician. Same with these guys. Like, they, you know, the, the, a dodgy electrician wires it up wrong. You, you know, zzz, you're getting zapped. Um, <laughs> yeah. Where's your recourse? Will you go sue or whatever? So mm. why has this industry solved its problems through legislation and extra ass covering, whatever you call it? How, how how have we ended up here? And that's and how and how are we going to get ourselves out of it? You know how do we you know build ourselves into someone coming over and going, well, Paul, I want you to give me financial advice, and I'll go, well, this is what you should do, mm. and not you know oh, I don't mind giving you a document outlining it and having a great relationship. Should I have to spend, you know, two weeks producing statements of advice for this one case for no re- material benefit to anyone, uh, really? I had a meeting today and I'm like... like really? Who's benefiting? And there's some real stuff, like the advice is... Totally. The dealer group, anyone, I guess. Well, no, but aren't, they're not benefiting. Well, it gives them a reason to exist. No, well... A, 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 a good dealer group, and, and I, look, we've had these discussions and, uh, you know, I'm not afraid of getting rid of the dealer group. Tell us what you really but, think. <laughs> but, but the dealer group is there as a community, I see, and it should be a community that you fit in. So that's why you've got to be careful when you, you pick your dealer group and you've got to fit in with them. You've got to have the right culture. You've got to have alignment because the idea is that you're meeting other people who have similar practices and you're centralising support and, and, and reducing your costs. That should be – that's why they sort of start. Do you need a dealer group if you've got XY advisor? Yes, Potentially not. you definitely need a licence. Oh, you need a licence. I'm not saying – no, <laughs> well, you can keep the licence, but, 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 but the stuff but, but, you're I don't need about. a licence. Well, I'm look, a part of XY. Here, here you go. What, what if what – The if, community rationale. Yeah, he's, you know, and, and look, we're just, we're just chucking it around here, but how about you just get individually licensed because you have done your – your your dues, you've 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 oh, kept it going. Oh, like the carpenter with the golden license. Oh, there we go. Something like that. You right. Know? What if you are that person and it doesn't cost you hundred thousand dollars plus nine months to get a license? It shouldn't. Mm, it yeah. should be. Well, you, you've ticked the box and you got your annual subscription and there you go. Because you've got the right to actually do what you're doing. I mean, becoming an accountant. You've got to do the same things. You've got to join the industries, but they don't have to do what we have to do. Um, uh, so again, I and dealer groups, it's... do they make it easier? I think dealer groups are, 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 again, that aligned piece. They've come from that. And then the individual dealer groups. You know, it's funny because probably two, three weeks ago, everyone was saying it was the death of, of the, inter, you know, the ver- vertically integrated model with, you know, the, the, the Royal mm. Commission. And then all I've been reading since Dover fell over is that oh now now independent um <laughs> dealer groups are no good and and you know they've been tainted it's like well who is any good like well, the problem is such a good, the problem is good there's question, not enough. it's like everyone's got it it's just been there's no around. incentive like, for anyone to come in and take on like a sizable dealer group at the moment like who well, would want to in their right mind take on risk and this is the big one of the biggest issues that's going on 
is a mispricing of risk in the market. Absolutely. So you've got all, like, apparently the, the figures are ridiculous, but the pricing of licensee costs and figures mm. is already completely subsidised. All sorts of different structures, like there's all sorts of different ways you can do it through whether you're offering um, technology and you're making money on there, whatever it is, products, there's a few different ways you can do it. But the market rate, technically what what a advisor pays, is actually below the risk costs that goes into it. And arguably the risk costs, Mm. so a subsidised rate is there at the moment, and arguably the market rate has just shot through the roof. So you've got a situation where like the actual market rate for risk is actually way above what is what anyone is, is You could probably run a, run a, comp- a correlation between that and the, uh, the value of practices at the moment as well. Exactly. Interesting. <laughs> That's probably a direct. So there's an issue there, like structurally, yeah. I reckon. Um, and like I, I remember talking, I don't remember who we talking, it might have been with Dante or someone previously mm. going on about the accountants. Got, they've got that centralised and the lawyers have this centralised liability scheme. What does it makes, and they've got way less regulation and requirement. Like you think, okay, what well, what's a prerequisite to have one of these schemes? Oh, okay, we have a pretty lot of strict rules. Like make sure that like if the government's going to support something like that, that people have to play within the rules. Well, the most regulated industry in Australia, well, I think we've got those. So why not have a body centralised? Too many rules. That's the yeah. problem. and that would actually set a benchmark of risk. Have a really clear framework about like, and maybe you throw an individual licensing. Maybe that takes that's well, and you got the reg. Whether it's licensing through. or whether it's individual, like you, a solicitor is a classic one, right? You pass the the, the set the of exams, exams and well, we've got an exam it. coming through as well. So there you so go. So you do this. You qualify to do the exam. You pass the exam. You should be okay, right? To practice, to set up a shingle or. You pay your fee to, to the government for whatever it is, but I wonder you know, where, where where does it? Why are we so convoluted? Well, we've only just Lucky. let go of products. That's that's the reason. Yeah, products have well, only just been let go, and it's a new mm. thing. Value proposition disconnected from products. I was talking to um, I was talking to someone yesterday actually, and they're like talking about some of the SOAs we're doing. They're like, oh, do you do we do SOAs now without um, product? And and that's that's it's not a completely new thing, but this is actually becoming, this is actually like an is institutionalized. That an well, because well, isn't that the reason to do an SOA? Because you because it's dictated you cover all these exactly. bloody conflicts. I know. Well, right? hope, like I'd that be attracted it. to it. It's probably like a much shorter SOA. Yeah. Here's here's the advice. You pick the product. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much. Wow. And like you think about the liability that drops off there as well, um, and the values kept intact. A lot of the values still kept intact. Well, and then you might go to an implementation place that hasn't given the advice. So you might have an implementation specialist that delivers. And, and you can just have like a, a Sprout Super uh, poster on the oh, wall as they walk out. What's what? what <laughs> what's Sprout Super? What, he's, he's, he can't have I don't know. Jack, Jack of the Beast. Decide to it's start a, a super fund X, or something. XY, I think. <laughs> just, just stick it on the poster. Do you have your Sprout Super app? But the, prob- the, the problem is. I like is great. that business model. They give you give the advice without the product, but then the amount of products and the the you know, totally and, it's a and complex that's, and that's environment. The and that's the reason why it still has to be connected. That's the problem with superannuation. There is a lot of superannuation funds. How are people meant to choose? Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't need to be connected. Like, uh, uh, just get a list of ten. Yeah, well, yeah. Like imagine six, imagine six, the um, well, like please, but the l- yeah. electricians like um, so you can have this this and this wire. Take your selection. Um, I'll implement it for you. Imagine that. But imagine if that's what it was. Uh, these are ten uh, potential <laughs> po- uh, sorry uh, super Wires funds. Yeah. yeah, that's would that negate it? If you go, oh. here's a selection. We haven't recommended which one. Because because that's the Productivity Commission, right, has come out and said yeah. it's going so, to be top 10 that all employers so have to use. Essentially, and this is very simplistic, you know, there's a lot of different recommendations and they have specifically mentioned in there that advice is, is still, you know, needed in this. In, in their, oh, in that, that's nice. Their, oh, no, that's good. <laughs> um, but the, the, basically what they're doing is taking the onus off the employer choosing a super fund for their employees and putting it straight back onto the employee. So they don't have yep. to get involved. Everyone's outsourcing. Just like when you join yep. a new company, they say, give me your bank account for your pay. They'll say, give me your bank account for your pay and give me your super fund. If you haven't got one, there's a system that allocates yep. it. They don't have to get involved. Here you go, apathetic people. Make a choice. Which is the New Zealand system to an extent. Um, the Kiwi Saver system is like that. 
Wasn't that, wasn't that invested in cash? I remember seeing one that was just like... <laughs> no, nah, there were six six choices to start off with. Okay. Um, and they were sort of, they were a default situation. It was 2%. You could get it out to, to buy a house at some stage and things like that. But it has in, evolved. In but... Finland, where uh, Vera is from, you put money aside and you basically purchase units in your government pension. Oh, you get a proportion of like it's almost like yeah. still a defined scheme. It's it's all defined, but but how much you put you're in getting the proportion. Is how much there, you there's get not out. many governments who would take that risk on anymore, and that, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's been the evolution of our whole superannuation That'd be great. system. Yeah, that's do you why. want to buy shares in an um, an unfunded liability? Yeah. <laughs> the government, I think the government would love to do that here. Are you, they're looking at two point five trillion and being like, well, we could use that. I'm, I'm sure they've kicked the tires a few times. Yeah, um, and the future fund and all that, but. That's a mammoth task and a lot of, you know, talk about pricing risk. Yeah, what's and the ROI like that, on government that, um, investment? And, and, I, and I think the other side of this is we are beating this system up incessantly, but the amount of money and, and wealth that it's created for Australians is, is quite phenomenal. It is <laughs> totally. seen across the world as one of the best systems. And here we're just, because of all this infighting and, and all the different agendas from each, you know, it just I'm interested, it's really mate. hurting everything. What if you could do Don't uh, ask me how to solve it, mate. Well I want to. <laughs> I mean, and hey, I'm going to. Oh, You've got mate. more grey hair than us, so mate, mate, I'm got, qualified. Uh, no, no. Uh, I'm gonna ask <laughs> you. Oh, he's, he's got a couple oh, of stuff. Here we go. I noticed here that yesterday. I noticed I saw go. him yesterday. Righto, righto, righto. <laughs> All right. So um so if you could do a couple of things, what would you do to improve the whole industry, Paul? Look, my main focus would be um and, and it's very simplistic, but education and, and really making sure that the race, that it's not about default. If I could change anything in super, I would make it not about default, that super funds, if possible, would be incentivised to have people not in default, mm. to have people in the right asset class for their circumstances, not their age, not the, you know... I'm a 1970s to 1980, whatever it is, you know, to, for their personal circumstances. Or comfort. Well, you know as an advisor, sometimes you've got to take people outside their comfort zone because it's good for them, right? Because you know what's better but for them. But who's going to do that? Well, who, I think who's? we can. Um, oh, someone needs to. That, yeah. uh, if I could Well, who does do that something? besides an advisor? No one. There you and, go. And, and this is where, you know... The industry funds, they say they look after people, and I'm sure they do with the returns, but they like people just staying in default and not moving. Mm. Same with the retail funds, whatever you call them, wholesale funds, those, very similar. They have advisors attached, and they try and get people in front of them. But the cost of serves goes up if people are too engaged, um, so you don't want you don't want that. Like the actual, <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's almost as cynical as me. Oh, mate, um, don't even get him started. <laughs> Yeah, but not if there's scale. Well, oh. and and I've run businesses like that where you, you if you give a lot of advice to a lot of people, get your systems right, mm. you can give advice. Well, it's something that we've on been scale totally. to people who aren't going to pay much for it. It, it can be done. It was something a, a, a sort of a theme that we've been um, teasing out of people recently is people are doing something really simple or occasionally slightly dressed up but the goal is to figure out what someone's personality is and how they like to be communicated with and you're kind of touching on this is to figure out what people want and make because i guess to your mind default means failure to understand and 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 to to uh, customize someone's plan right well, it's ambivalence right if, right. You're, if you're in default you have not touched it. Right. So theoretically, um, when someone joins an employer, they could do a short personality test or something like that, or even or even something as simple as like, a, like maybe even a, a one-question risk profile, <laughs> even something as simple as look, that. There, and look, there's a lot of technology out there. One of the things, like you're talking about engagement and the apathetic, like I've always gone, okay, well, the, one of the biggest impacts from a, like a financial standpoint of less engaged people is more welfare expenditure when people retire. That's like a, that's the outcome. That's a financial outcome. The government budget gets hit, and you'd think that would be enough incentive. They want to they want to regulate everything else. Why not like give a give a uh, cash back for or a tax incentive for people to seek financial advice? 
Like, what about that? Like, just it doesn't have to be huge. Well, the whole just reason, enough incentive. The whole to reason get superannuation in. was invented back in the day, you know, in the key. It, Keating was to, to take the burden off the future welfare payments. And it's going to... Absolutely. Wait, wait, wait. Help. Wasn't it so that unions could be in control well, of more money? There is a bit of that going on. But let's be <laughs> honest. No. <laughs> You're going to get me hunted down. Um, that, that's, you know, that, that, again, the, the, I think the, the essence of superannuation, why it was created, was pure. But, of course, once you have a sum of money... That An apathetic sum of money. People cannot keep their hands off it. Right. And people are going to be in there and they're going to be feeding off it. And whether it's governments taxing it or whether it's institutions or, you know, associations or whatever you call them, they will be there. Mm. Is there a better the system in the in. world than the Australian superannuation system? Is there is there one that's... Well, there's not one that's as fully engaged. In ter- and I, when I say engaged, as fully... Um, across the board. Across the board yeah. as a default situation. Yeah. It, it is pretty pretty strong. We seem Look, to be... there's probably a few of the Scandinavian countries and those sorts of places, but you know, the, you go to the US and it's 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 a lottery. They've got a few yeah. different things. Don't well, they? the four hundred one k, but mm. you know, it, it's it's a very convoluted system and it's a voluntary yeah. system that your company will buy into. But if you're not earning enough and, and yeah, it's very, it was very complex, linked to the employer. Yeah, and you can you can only change it once a year. That's a, a unique feature of the four hundred one. You've got a little window of a couple of weeks where you can change your investments and, and, and your Is insurance. That right. Oh, wow. And then that's it. I really you can't touch it for for twelve months. Wow. Mm. So. Yeah, I reckon we've got we've we've got the flip side of such a good system. The flip side of such a good system, which is mandated, you've got like you're taken. So the market's been taken out of it. It's people are forced to put money inside super. And and I know there's like hardliners that go super's bad. Like you got to give people the choice, but without it, you're not going to even get that baseline of support for the government balance sheet. 20, 30 years time sort of thing. So that's at least like you got that baseline. But the flip side is that because you're it's it's forced, there's there's no you're not um, people aren't getting forced to actually develop ways of engaging. Like there's no requirement for a business like there's these default plans. Like there's there's no requirement for someone to compete with a value proposition necessarily. And like there's, it's going on, but it, there hasn't been enough of a requirement to really um, bring innovation and what goes on in other spaces where you go, there's there's money up for grabs, but like people have to hand it over to you first. It's not just sitting there. This way, you've got people that you've got no, like there's this pool of money there and the people are over here and you sort and, of go. And that's what the Productivity Commission came and said. Like really, at the moment, under the award structure, um, 70% of the market is tied up with industry funds through mm. mandates. So, you know, there is no competition as such. You know, you, you're a nurse, you, you go with the, the, the nurse's one, you, you, you work in retail, you go with the retail one. But, you know, it's such a weird thing. Well, look, that's, that's the unions forcing those issues and protecting people. And, look, I'm, I'm sure they're, they're, um, they're, their motives are absolutely pure in, in, in that way. But, again, the sums of money and... From my point of view, what they're doing with it isn't good enough. The good thing, not that, not that the banks and everything, but like I'm not saying they're better because mm. you know obviously we, we know they're not. But I think the whole system needs to get better. It's well, not. Let's not have sides. Let's solve the problem for the. Let's maybe the get it a bit more standardised. <laughs> well, <laughs> if we limit it <laughs> to ten, to ten, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I don't understand. Well, the good that. thing about like the industry funds with that um, the groupings is around the insurance side of things. So for some, for some more specialist sort of that, that has been a good outcome. Maybe, but arguably, they, Maybe. you could actually have that disconnected from super. Some of it's pretty, you know, the the the, the, indus, the, the industry funds aren't renowned for having sensational insurance. Options. Oh, across average across the board, it's pretty ordinary. But for so, niche niche um, like police and things like that, mm-hmm. military, you've got some oh, absolutely. Really sti- and there's but be does some, that need to be linked to a super fund? Well, is that a super fund? It, it, why is it in super? You know, traditionally, super has been the centre of people's staff benefits for everyone, whether, you know, no matter you work, it's always been the hub. Mm. But, I mean, there's an argument now um, that insurance shouldn't be in it. You know, it's probably cheaper outside these days than the group uh, group premiums. Yeah. Yeah, you and, take and, and a company, out, it's pretty well, competitive. And, and in a choice environment, so think about this, and I heard this argument the other day, um, it used to be that a good company wanted to look after its people. It brought in a great super fund. It chose a default level of, of uh, insurance 
life, maybe a, a great salary continuance cover because it wanted to protect its people. It might subsidise some of it by paying overs in, in you know, salary, uh, you know, SG contributions, things like that. But a good company was doing that. But that's been whittled away because in a choice environment, not everyone has to use that super fund. So you turn up and go, no, I don't want to use that, I want to use this one. It hasn't got that level of default. So the company's aim of protecting its people is taken away. Well, so it, the company can still do that now. They, they should get rid of that, have a group policy, and then it becomes an the only, attraction. The only issue, policy. mate, and I keep on coming up against it, it's so frustrating, is the, the employees, like people move jobs so much. And you want to do a strategic long-term insurance plan, it just, you can't. Like yep. I'm, and you're sitting Absolutely. there going, it's, they don't get money if they turn that off. And it's just so hard with the client. They're going, that's free. Why are we paying? I'm like, it's if you change jobs yeah. and you totally. have had an accident or something in between, you cannot replace which is, that. Which, which is why, yeah, you write individual insurance for yeah. that person, totally. that client. I totally agree. But there's, you know, there's all these things going on. The other part of the productivity commission uh, was this, um, you know, there shouldn't be default insurance if you're under 25. Yeah, that one's interesting. Why? Mm, well, because it you... takes away from your balance of your super when it's starting out. I think that's the, the general. Because if you're under 25 and there's you're that and a, permanently and a, injured or disabled, sucked in? There's that and there's a, um, a, a, a <clears throat> prescribed level about $6,000 where if you your balance goes under $6,000, um, Yeah, insurance. that's a joke. Because that, how many times did I ever do that? Just leave five thousand dollars in a. In a well, what about what about market conditions going up and down? Like you know, all of a sudden we ha- we have a bit of a yeah. correction and everyone loses their insurance in in those lower balances. It's in complete even though they're, conflict they're building. for like someone the young you are, the more TPD you need. It's just like a lot of the yeah, time it's the case. Correct. That's absolutely. Yes. That's how it is. Like, and it's it's so, so weird that if you're under fa- 26, you don't get TPD. the fact that it's been linked to death is like the death doesn't need to be there. But yeah, the life, I, can't, the like, I, could, I could understand that, but yeah, so definitely TPD. Separate it out. Make it. Take it get, out of super. Get people informed and take them. I reckon there's understand. another government incentive <laughs> coming along. The, the, oh, you got the, the baby bonus. The government you've insurance You've got buy a house bonus. What about the huge liability unfunded? On the balance sheet, short term with insurance, long term with superannuation. Go to, Incentivize the fuck this. out of everyone to do it. <laughs> you want to do it with everything else? That is what you. That's actually when you. When, whenever whenever something comes up to do with the government, uh, I just send it to Patty. I'm like, hey mate, do you want to <laughs> put your nose into this? And he's like, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes I do. <laughs> they know, yeah, if they know what's good for them, they'll let me decide. It's such. There's so exactly. many. Um, there's I've got all the variables. <laughs> So many variables. But that would just fix it. Like, just <laughs> you yeah, for, it. for everyone. <laughs> yeah. For everyone. <laughs> enough right. carrot, uh, Adrian enough for stick. Pa- uh, Adrian for PM. Absolutely. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants that job anymore. This is not a nanny state anymore if that happens. <laughs> oh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're allowed to drink in the street again, that's for sure. That is definitely for sure. Uh, that is when life becomes a bit more enjoyable in Sydney. I've got to say, as an Australian, uh, I've never once been picked up for, for roadie. I, you know, I've walked around many a street mm. uh, drinking a beer until it's finished and then you nicely place it in a bin. I've never had a cop go, Yeah, but you, but you don't feel comfortable doing it. Yeah, it's you not are, great. Yeah, there's a little it's bit not of... great, but at the same time, you know. And, and you can't just buy a beer from a news agency. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's... one of the funnest things I reckon I did in Europe was like I was in Berlin and you go in and it's like going it's in. anywhere it's, in Europe it's a, it's a, or it's, Asia. It's a random or convenience. Or America. Well, but it's, it's a random convenience store. Like going into a boutique exotic beer place in like Sydney yeah. and the beer is like two bucks mm. and you go, I'm going to have a beer and I'm going to walk outside yeah. and I'm going to just walk along the street and enjoy yeah, my beer. Yeah, it's mad. <laughs> or, I love it. Roadies. You go to McDonald's and go, you'll have the Big Mac meal <laughs> with a beer. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that is living. Please tell me you did that on your honeymoon. No, I didn't. I've done it before. Oh, he got a Spain's pino. better for that. <laughs> I don't think I went to McDonald's. We were doing better than that. No, I know. I was tracking you on uh, on on Facebook. <laughs> God, you, you you leave in business class, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm I'm willing to watch this now. <laughs> well, hey, it's still honeymoon. He's really got to lock this shit down. Like it's still <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. You don't want an annulment. This is the after sale service. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's implemented. You got to do this every day, right? Exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> he knows what he's doing, Clay. Yeah, yeah. No rookie. <laughs> Mate, actually, I've already picked up a couple of, uh, a couple of good tips. Uh, yeah, on how yeah. to nail your wedding. Don't share them. Yeah, no, no. Uh, up here. I mean, up yeah. here. Yep, yep. You pass that on when, when, and when it's necessary. Absolutely. Yes. How are we going to solve this? I already right. gave you the answer. Who knows? Yeah. Well, that's only, that's only the insurance piece. Mm. And then. No, that was a super as well. Oh, okay. Super and but insurance. Su- but super ends up on the. Um, on the on the commission next week, right? Yeah. So what are we expecting out of that? Well, have you been able to predict it so far? <laughs> have you been able to predict what's happened at this no. Royal Commission? It's been like mind blowing. Yes. Um, and you know, and I've listened to a few your, your podcasts and people coming on, like the the AFA guys and that, going, we were against it, but then we thought, no, we shouldn't be. But I think we're all for it. Yeah. As long as the result. Yeah. Is the right result now. We don't know what that is. It's been some weird but, scalps. Well, look, it's let's be honest, it's a royal scalps. commission. They're not looking for the good stuff. Yeah, but I, I just like some really not rare... Looking, like, that's not what a royal commission does. They look for the really bad stuff Yeah, and word it out, highlight it, and say you need to fix this. That's, but like, <sighs> but you got situations where my mate like Sam Henderson ended up on there and, and it was just... I mean, what he got in trouble for was just... Outrageously, he should never have been there. In in my humble opinion, like I, I just could not believe it that he ended up a scalp of the royal commission. Like, what the hell? Like, I, I, if if you're going to improve the banking, financial services, superannuation, and everything like that, like, I mean, he wasn't double gearing. He wasn't he wasn't doing any of these things that were that that's been known to take out advisors. And yet, just ding, a finger just lands on his head. I couldn't believe it. Well, look, uh, unfortunately, um, Sam puts himself, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, puts himself out there and you do that, there's a risk that oh, you're going to be taken out. Unbelievable. And I, you know, that, that's that, you know, whether, whether you like it or not, that's a risk of putting yourself out there. Um, you know, I was actually caught up with a, a, a very uh, a senior industry veteran the other night. He's, um, yeah, uh, he's, he's a really great guy. He's been in the industry for, he's almost 70. Um, we had a few beers and... He really feels passionately that if ASIC had solved the storm financial situation properly, that we would not be in anywhere near the mess we're in currently. And what, what, what does so properly how? look like? Yeah. Well, well, not what they did, right? Let it go. Everyone knew that there was the wrong things going on there. Everyone knew. And, and all of a sudden it blew up mm. at the very wrong time, which, you know, everyone, you know. Well, not, that's it, the sort of thing that happens when you've got something that's not the right exactly. setup. Exactly. <laughs> but there was no intervention. And whether they didn't have the resources or didn't have the guts, I don't know. Mm. But his view was that if that had been solved, but it ha- it wasn't and they let things go and all of a sudden everything spiralled out of control. Mm. And now they're trying to put the genie back in the bottle but they did stop double gearing. It was too late. Yeah, okay. What well, they knew about that, and oh, you mean if they'd stepped in prior yeah, to it exploding? Absolutely right. Well, you know, and and I know. Look, I got uh, someone showed me what they were doing years and years ago. Um, they wanted it was a, it was someone at the place I worked, and they were using Storm, and he said, "I'll oh, come and you know show me." I want you to see this and, you know, you could use it in your business. It's really great. I was like, well, what happens if the market goes down? And they didn't have an answer for that. So like, no thanks. Right? <laughs> and being, a, you know, an ex-futures trader, like the markets go down. Like markets go down. Yeah, it so hurts, it hurts with futures too. <laughs> even more. And that's, you know, that's, that's pricing risk. So, um, you know, so ha- how, you know, these things that are sold to unsophisticated people, uh, with commissions, whatever the the, the you know unlimited um, riches coming out of it, mm. it, it was a recipe for disaster, um, and it's it's a blight on the industry because it, it was sort of it was a major you know it, yeah, it's it wasn't one of the just more structural sort of yeah it, it had made, and ASIC knew about it the CBA were involved there was people involved um, you know fines have gone out but was it ever really yeah, have we really fixed that up or we just, oh, you can't do double gearing anymore? Like there's so many ethical as well as structural uh, questions around that. And Which uh, which co- commissions within investments? Well, you, they were doubling up on every stage. Yeah, exactly. So so stripping out commissions from investments, getting rid of double gearing, I think they're two good good moves. 
It's pretty that like I've talked we've talked about this before on the podcast and it's like well that was taking commissions for investments was one of the simplest most effective like, yeah, impacts on the industry in my opinion brilliant yeah and, 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 it seems to work, and you didn't need to do all the other stuff just do that <laughs> so yeah but there's still commissions in life insurance yeah in insurances you know it, is that going to work yes or no yeah it's the issue you, you the know, you issue look, with look at insurance broken, I mean, yeah the broken. issue with insurance is the mm. from my understanding all over the world as soon as you take out commissions from insurance it just stops because no one wants they were created with commissions yeah and it i if that's the argument and i've never looked at the research but if it's legit that Show me where in the world they've tried to sell insurance and, and not have commissions and it just doesn't sell, then okay, you got me. But obviously superannuation needs to be invested, right? It's it's all there. Mm. So yeah, to, like it doesn't need to be sold. Super doesn't need to be sold. So absolutely get rid of the commissions there. And then with mortgages, because the the the, the mortgage broker isn't recommending what house to be purchased and isn't recommending the size of the loan to purchase the house, they're not a part of that recommendation. I personally don't see a conflict. I personally just see well, it as, as a service. they're recommending what, what product to use. It's sure, but it's much to muchness. That, like in, in my view, the, it's very, the insurance- It's very similar. It's just a different- the issue, with, the, the issue that I have with insurance is the person who's recommending the amount is receiving the commission. So there's a conflict so there. So mortgage broker. No, because the, 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 the couple or the person who whoever it is is walking in and saying, I'm buying this house and then the mortgage broker goes, Okay, well you need a loan. There is there is So so they're not they're not recommending an amount. There's still oh, a absolutely. little bit of a there's still a little bit of an impact there because you yeah. don't have as much resistance to oh to reduce like to go, because you know, because well, you better borrow more, do this, small, and and I'm not saying that's what goes because I've seen, you know, again, it's those small minority, mm. and that's where mortgage brokers, you know, they've had investigations, and there's been a lot of turmoil in that, oh, that place. Is as well, that's right? what's going to bring the economy down, and that you know, it's selling oh, you heard it here, gearing it up. You heard it here. <laughs> it happened where, last time. Whereas you know, really, you know, I no, I mean like just teams the and mortgage rules. brokers, and the, and the idea was to pay the mortgage off as quick as possible. Let's get you the best one that you can pay off as well as possible. But there's always that minority when commissions exist who are going to take advantage of it. Perhaps and that's it, a problem. Perhaps it's just mm. a flat fee. I don't know how to solve the the, the, the commission and the insurance. Oh, I don't think anyone does. Issue. That's, and that's the problem. Well, Otherwise, it, you'd think it'd be solved. Well, one thing yeah. that would help with lending would be giving the option. Because we were talking about with Steve Crawford the other week, like, you don't have the option. So I looked into it. Like, I was like, okay, I've taken comms out of insurance. Cool. I started having conversations about comms, no comms, and... What you can't take comms out of a bank loan. You can't. Like the structural, there's. That's why we we're talking to um, Vince Scully before. No. He has to rebate it. So you got this whole administrative nightmare that opens up yep. to actually facilitate that sort yep. of it does, effect. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, that, it's it's. That's crazy. So because there's that, that structure's not there, and that's like if anything comes out, at least giving the option for that to happen would mm. be a good thing, because then you price what's the value a broker delivers to the party. It's it's like sort of when you have to have the discussion around no comms for insurance. The only thing I would say about that is that's a that's a, a struck that's a product providers challenge because well it's the, not the a challenge that, they ha- they don't want to do it they don't want to do it if you could take you know you, you take your commission out and there's a like for like drop in the in the premium hmm. and you're charging a fair fee you'd do that that's every a market day. activity but you, you you take it out and you go well hang on that's not fair the product provider. Keeps more, mm. you get paid less, and no one, no one actually wins. The, the, the client needs to win. Correct. Right, and they should provide those flexibility. That, that flexibility. Yeah, the structure and will that's, open that's up, why and then the market it's... will come in and go, okay, what's my service proposition to? Well, how come? Well, I mean, there's little banks popping up everywhere, right? Why isn't there a bank popping up just saying I we can take out commission if the there's centralised aggregators? Well, it's not the bank. The banks make money. Imagine what the banks are making on their direct stuff. Yeah, you know. fair play. That's how they make money. Yeah. By the way, lending it out. And yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice but margins on that. <laughs> Have you seen the gap between the reserve bank rate and the the home loan rate? It's quite large. Quite internationally, quite did large. You That's see how, how banks make money. Did you see how large that <laughs> grew during the GFC? Yeah. That that it was, it was like what this. What they call that? The gap. Um, it's got a term. The margin. No, nah, something else. But anyway, it was big. A three four percent or something. Like no. No, I don't think it's three or four percent. It's a two and a half now. Yeah, 
So when it blew out in the... That's, no, I don't think it ever got that big. It would have gone. Yeah, it's been what? all over the place, mate. That's, there you go. Hmm. So, yeah, look, it's... There are structural issues. There's probably not enough competition around that as well. Mm. Um, and I think we just need to think about the client more. Everyone. Not the... The shareholders need to be thought about, but that's at the end, you know? And, and it's not all hippie love and mung beans. Like, you know, people <laughs> need to make money and Correct. live, you know, a, a life. And success should, you know, if you're very successful and do well, you should earn more, mm. but but not by convoluting. Well, I can run, one start would be, okay, well, you go, okay, you got a, you're an advisor that has great ideas, they deliver, they grow into a practice that delivers great service. What are the impediments for them to grow and help more people? What's stopping them? What licensing, compliance, regulation issues are preventing that? To to regulate putting maybe on another other parts. Ad, putting on another advisor in your business is really tough. Mm. Finding them and then yeah, actually making that making that happen um, is is a nightmare. It is very prohibitive. Um, it's not just like getting a a subby in when you're an electrician and getting another. You know, you just pay them a daily rate or whatever. Mm. You, you can't do that. Um, so yeah, that that's one of the big things. Let alone you know. Where do you find your clients? But, you know. Wow. But, again, if everyone was more engaged with their money, mm. and that's a you know big term, you know, we're, what we're talking about, 20 to 15% of people use financial advisors. Like, well, let's be honest, 90% of people need a financial advisor. But it's yeah. too prohibitive cost-wise for the majority. I actually don't think it is that. As, a lot of it is just fear and not knowing what, to ask what to do, what to receive how, how, in value. How do, how, all, you, all you see in the papers is financial advisors are dodgy. So how how are you going to go and pick one mm. as a, as an average punter who's not no dummy, but you know um, an average punter who? Um, how do you do that? Literally, where do you start? I, I like avoid Adrian, <laughs> and then go from there. That's my two <laughs> tips to anyone. Oh, come oh. on. Oh, it's a Friday afternoon. He sent me oh, that's uh, silly. He uh, sends me people. So exactly. That's how so he should. Actually, he is. That's yes. how he should. But I reckon. That, I, I was just going to say, like, I, I, I've got, I've got hope. There's, you think about some of the marketing, the engagement that, like, what people are doing now. Like, it's, think about some of the discussions in um, the X Y Advisor Group, other groups in the industry. Like, people are getting amazing at actually getting cutting through the bullshit tapping into people and actually pulling them into a better world of like financial maturity, et cetera. Mm. Well, there's this whole and industry it's... that's born out of this now, which is the pre-advice industry. You know, there is a pre-advice industry. So getting people ready for advice. Mm. Yeah, There's a yeah. big industry in that. And it's avoiding the conversations that we have, you know, whether it's financial counselling or, yep. you know, you look at... Um, you know, what's that? Um, my my budget, those sorts yep. of. You know, they're, yep. they're my all... budget, map my plan. You got Life Sherpa. You got Scott Pape, the Barefoot Investor. Yeah, that's pretty. Because he doesn't make any recommendations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Scott. Um, <laughs> uh, but you, you know, that that whole pre advice, you know, and, and institutions are building that. BT's built a, a, a really good platform, getting you, you know, what do you do? Go through a pre assessment, then you know, and hopefully it gives you the. The ammunition to go in and say, yeah, well, let's give people tools. So to... I know, do I need a financial advisor? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know. No, I tend to agree. If we grow the okay, pre-advice. Well, I, do you, have you the, have you got these situations? Are you in this? Do you understand this? No, I don't. Okay. So I do need advice. How do I select one? What should I look for? And if there's anyone out there looking to get advice, how would they get in contact with you? Ah, oh, truedirection.com.au, but, oh, you know. <laughs> very good, very good. All right, mate. Well, thank you very much for coming on again. It's been That's an absolute right. pleasure. Well, thanks, guys. Well, see you it. in three months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate.